So now we're going to talk a little bit about the digital dollar. And the reason this came up, I love talking about blockchain stuff. The reason this, I, again, I talk about things I'm super interested in. I'm super interested in this space. So the reason this came up was because in some of the bills, in some of the early drafts of the bills, they were calling for work to be done on a digital dollar. Now, why at this time are we worrying about a fucking digital dollar? Shouldn't we be worried about tests and other shit? Well, the reason a digital dollar may be a good idea, we'll talk a little bit more about the, what that means, but I just want to tell you why it was being discussed in these early versions of the bills. Like Pelosi was Pelosi was floating it around and you know some other, it didn't end up in the bill, um, the, the CARES Act, but... Um, the idea is that if we have a digital dollar, we can we can more effectively distribute that to Americans. Now, I'm going to read. You say, well, what do you mean? If you have a checking account, um, if you have a checking account, um, it'll they'll distribute the check within a you know well, within a reasonable amount of time. Or excuse me, the deposit the 1,200 bucks for this as part of the state. A reasonable amount of time, just like you get your tax refund within a couple weeks after you file. Now, you may find this interesting. Um, uh, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation estimated in 2017 that 6.5% of American households are unbanked, meaning that no one has a checking or savings account. People with bank accounts can use ca check cashing services. So for these people that are unbanked, 6.5% of U.S. households, um, they'll be sent a check and they don't have a bank account. So what do you do with a check? You go to a check cashing service, which are fucking charge fees and fleece you on that stuff. So... Um, uh, the, the, another option uh, would be to use the Treasury Department's Direct Express MasterCard, a prepaid card that the government already uses to distribute benefits. But these cards are not a great solution either because they're not reloadable. So for some benefits, the federal government will send you uh, uh, basically a gift card um, that you can use uh, anywhere. Um, uh, so that, that's why there's been talks of a... Uh, 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 um, of the digital uh, of a digital dollar. Now, I think something that people um, and okay, so uh, I should address I should address this. Um, uh, um, I want to address a quote. So, well, isn't the do dollar already digital? I go on BankofAmerica.com and I have a U.S. dollar, right? It's there in my checking account. Well, here's the deal. Here's what they say to that. In some ways, the dollar is already digital. The digits in your bank account stand for dollars, and you can pay with dollars by swiping your credit card. But those digits in your bank account are debts that your bank owes you. A true digital dollar would be a debt the U.S. government owes you. That's also what physical cash represents. In most countries, a government IOU is less risky than an IOU from a commercial bank, particularly during a panic. Hence, the popular reference to stockpiling cash under a mattress. If I have $100 in cash that is safer in my hand, that is safer than having $100 in a checking account, why? The bank could, uh, the bank could go under. Now, it's, the banks are FDIC insured. Um, I think uh, up to a million dollars. If your bank goes down, your money in there, you'll get it eventually. But I don't want to wait for eventually. What if? And I don't keep I don't keep cash on hand. I'm, uh, that's not how I roll. But I'm just saying, um, it's an interesting thing to think about. The money in your checking account is not it's not a U.S. dollar. It's a it's a debt your bank owes to you that when you go to the ATM you can withdraw it, or that when you tr make a transfer or when you pay a credit card off that they will indeed um, they will indeed send that. That is not an actual U.S. dollar. So a, a digital U.S. dollar would be would be basically. Um, and they called it, uh, there was a paper done on this, and they called it, what did they call it? They called it the, um, damn, I forgot what they what they called it. But basically, um, it was basically, they're thinking about providing Fuking, um, the retail bank services that bank, you know, your, your Bank of America checking account, you go to ATM, Wells Fargo, whatever it is. Like having the federal government do that directly. Right, so that you would just have a checking account with the federal government. Think the federal government's not going to go bankrupt. Like there, your dollars there. Why not? Why just cut, why not cut out the middleman? Now, there's obviously risk to this. Our whole banking system is predicated on fuking retail banking, and they handle this stuff. And the, the Fed doesn't get close to that. And do you want the government building you a mobile app? It's like that, to access your money. That sounds like a walking nightmare. Um, uh, but. Um, it's an interesting, I think people take uh, cash for granted. Uh, and this is some of the MIT technology review. Um, uh, um, something that the, thank you, Jack Lucas, be free. That's chill. Um, uh, so people think, oh, well, isn't Venmo so much better? Isn't like, uh, they think just because we have technology that that means the payment payment situation is better in every single way. Now, I will admit, Venmo makes things super easy. I can send people, US citizens, I can send them money, even though it takes fucking three to five business days or whatever. It's dog shit. And I think cryptocurrency can address a lot of that stuff. But we'll talk about that. I mean, I talk about that shit all the time. But what we what we forget, um, the beauty of the beauty of cash, um, uh, the beauty of cash is that if I have a hundred dollars in my hand, I have a hundred dollar bill, I have a Benjamin. It is presumed that I own that hundred dollars. There's no, 
weird hand wavy shit. I have a hundred dollars in my hand and I give it to you, assuming it's not counterfeit. Now that's not that's not that's definitely a trade off there. But assuming it's not counterfeit, I give that hundred dollars to someone, boom, it is right there. It is pure. It is in their hand right there. And there's no evidence of that transaction. The issue with a lot of transactions now going online, credit cards, debit cards, all the shit, you can never now be tracked like never before. And I'm not necessarily a tinfoil hack guy. Um uh but there is something pure about a cash transaction. You, someone gives you a good or a service, you give them cash, poof. There's no history of it. It was boom, it was pure, it was done, it's over. Um, uh, and, it, and it immediately settled. You did not have to transfer it to Venmo, then transfer your bank account. It immediately settled that instant. Um, and this is, this is, that is, there's no middleman between you and your money. When you have cash on hand, that is your money. It's not in a bank account. It's not It's not in a fucking stock or whatever it could be in. You have that money in your hand. So there's something special about that. So, um, oh, there's also no, there's no history of that transaction. So when you have a hundred dollar bill, it's like psh, that cash is right there. So people aren't going to not accept it because they're going to look up the ID number and all this shit. Um, uh, there's something pure about that, with, which you can do with you know with some cryptocurrencies because they're only pseudo anonymous. So cash is kind of gets a bad rap, and I never use it, but there are some features it has that the our electronic system currently does not have. So I'm going to quote them. They say, "We call banknotes and coins cash, but the term really refers to something more abstract. Cash is essentially money that your government owes you. In the old days, this was a literal debt. I promise to pay the bear on demand the sum of. Oh yeah, so I promise to pay the bear on." On demand, the sum of it still appears on British on British banknotes. A notional guarantee that the Bank of England um, will hand over the same value in gold in exchange for your note. Today, it represents, uh, represent, <coughs> represents the more abstract guarantee, and we talked a little about this, that you will always be able to use that note to pay for things. Um, so, right, we're not on the gold standard anymore. So, what does the U.S. dollar what represents? What what do what does cash today even mean? It just means that the government is promising that people will use this as a form of cash, or people will use this as a form of payment, and you can trust that holding on to it and transacting in it will be safe, not only today but for for decades and years, uh, centuries to come.